Okay, so let me get some light in here. It's really early in the morning, and I'm coming back, baby. I'm coming back. So now I'm just prepping for a day teaching at Hugh Farrell. So this is actually my old school, and I get to go back and teach these guys some basic guitar. So, I need a new iron, clearly, because this is about the third time I learned this part. And these wrinkles just do not seem to be coming up at all. So, I'm here finishing off just finished teaching at Hugh and now I'm at coffee shop doing some online work. Just sitting here at a cafe, getting some online work done, and then head home and get some music done. So, I'm gonna be real, I've been slacking on practice, so I'm getting back on it. Back on it. Starting right here, a few different exercises. This one is one from Yannick Guzdala. So it's a descending 2-5 exercise. Down the minor 2 chord. And then you got like... Five chord, but dominant. So you're playing the the major third, perfect fifth, flat seven, and the nine minor chord, minor two, and then that's the dominant nine playing. But yeah, just going down this, moving it up and down the keys like Yannick does. And then, who knows, one day I'll get it up to the speed that he does. This used to flow so much smoother, especially when I was back at uni and I'd wake up and do an hour of practice like first thing in the morning. So I need to get back on doing that because this is not on. <laughs> this is going to get back up to speed real soon. You guys will see. Increase it by five. Let's see how we get on. Ah. Two, 
And I like to practice acoustically for two reasons. One, plugging in the amp, depending on where I am, and setting up can be a bit long. And two, personally, I just feel like if I can get it to sound great acoustically, so when I'm not plugged in, then when I plug in, it's going to have to sound that much better. Because if I can make it sound good when there's no tone or EQ involved, as soon as tone and EQ is involved, like, tone will be easy because it's all here. So, I'm going to go at this again. feeling smoother already to be honest and it's coming back to the hand so when I'm doing this daily like when I get back on this daily practice doing stuff like this progressive overload in a couple months even just a couple months but then even if I do that consistently for a year and hopefully you guys will see through this channel you'll see in a year the difference this exercise and stuff like this is going to make to the play so i'm just bringing it up 5 bpm it's 85 bpm Two, three. six deep notes at 85 bpm I'm going to keep pushing it a little bit. It's one of those ones as well, like that gym training exercise, like the more you sit under a particular weight or do a particular exercise, like in the meantime it feels hard, but over time it gets that much easier. Like no longer does that weight feel super heavy. It now starts to move that more fluidly and it doesn't happen overnight but it's that consistent working on it and just gradually increasing your boundaries and you know where you're putting your limits and what your tests are so I'll work at a slow tempo and the majority of my work will be at a slow tempo practicing without getting the reps in but I have to touch the faster stuff too to make sure my fingers know where we're getting to as well so it's just 5 p.m. more now. I'll we'll see how I get on with this. So I, I'm just using foam roller under my foot to raise it up so I can get this sort of angled position going on. One, two, three. Whoa. Here we go.
处。It's like, if I plugged in an amp, this would sound so much cleaner. And, because a lot of these extra tones that you're hearing just from me hitting the strings, you wouldn't, you wouldn't hear at all once it's plugged into an amp. But if I can knock those out acoustically, it's just going to make the plugged in sound that much clearer. So, I'm going to take it back 10 BPM. And hopefully now this 80 BPM should feel a lot smoother. Yeah, so that fluidity, I can feel it. I can feel it coming back now. I can feel it just feels that much more settled and more relaxed in my hand as well. So I'll go through that again. Three, four. Yeah, guys, I'm more recording some of my practice sessions now as an accountability method for myself. So if you don't see a practice video, something like this every week, like 
hit the comments, tell me, shout at me, be like, Caleb, where the videos are? Because I'll probably be slacking off somewhere at some point again. And it's just good to have that accountability to keep going. Sometimes practice doesn't feel like fun at all. <laughs> but it's got to be done. Got to smash it out. Um, it's time to level up this game. And I think you guys are going to see it. Like, hopefully you guys will see and hear it over the next however long on this channel on the instagram as well also if you're not following me on instagram at the underscore official underscore c you'll find me there follow check out the stuff there i've got a lot more that like, cool covers and that sort of thing there and here's much more documenting the journey and tips and tricks that i learned along the way so I've noticed a lot of people are asking for tabs in the videos as well. They do take a long time to make tabs and they're still not my favourite. They're not my favourite method of teaching stuff at all. Just purely because it limits you. You're looking at a finger position rather than the actual notes being played. And if you get the notation and learn to start to read, and I'm not a fluent reader, but I can work stuff out and transcribe stuff down onto sheet music it just opens up your options for playing a lot more and it allows you to be a bit more creative with what you're doing but if you do want to see tabs let me know obviously you know, I still do this I do this for a living I do a combination of teaching live playing and all that if you guys want tabs I would be happy to do it but are you guys willing to support the channel like that are you guys, I'm going to need you guys to, you know, be subscribing, commenting, to, you know, balance out the work that it's going to take to tab every single thing out that, that we do. Okay, so, if you guys are willing to support that, let me know, and we can make this happen. But, I'm going to get back to practicing. So back to 90 again, see if it feels smoother. Still not clean, could be cleaner. Just going to feel the weight of 95. See what that feels like.
and the rest out, give it another go. And again, this isn't painful, but I am starting to feel the muscles responsible for moving the fingers, like tiring up. So it's a good stamina exercise as well, but you shouldn't feel like pain in your fingers or hand, maybe just tiredness. It shouldn't actually hurt. Little bit messy. Same again. Crazy thing is Yannick plays it here. Yannick actually plays it this sort of tempo. Got a video of it somewhere. And this is like the medium tempo, which is the scary part. This is medium tempo. Now up tempo. Now take it back down to 85, which felt fast initially, but that should feel reasonably steady now.
So that should, 80 should feel steady now. Quick tip as well, I don't know if I said earlier, but I'm just using a metronome from Google. So if you type into Google metronome, you'll get an online metronome that allows you to run it there. You can work on that right there. Eighty BPM. We're there. I'm gonna keep practicing. The other thing that I'm looking at, other than just technique, is the melodic minor scale. So, melodic minor scale, if you don't know, is like a natural minor scale. So, natural minor scale starting from B. So root, major second, minor third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, minor sixth, flat seven, root note. Now, melodic minor is root note, major second, minor third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and root note. taken me a while to get used to the sound so one thing I'm doing is just playing it in thirds
And here I'm just doing groupings of three and triplets. Oh, wow. Let's take it back 10 BPM. So I'm making a lot of mistakes. Same again.
So I'm just trying groupings of four right now. It seems to be messing with me. I'm going to take it right down. 60 BPM. Oh, triads. Hmm. You should be okay. You're playing football, aren't you? Yeah. You should be fine. If I were you, I'd... No, uh, you should be okay. As long as you're happy potentially being cold later. <laughs> if you're on it, it's warm. Not if you're standing outside waiting for it. It's not freezing when I left. See you later. Now just using the triads of the melodic minor. So one chord in melodic minor, minor seven. Two chord is minor again. Three chord. Augmented like augmented with a major seven. So we got that sort of sound. On the third chord, 
Um, and then four chord. Evening. Four yeah. chord. Good. Ah. Uh, we'll come back to this. Yeah, you too, you too. Bless you, bro. Take care. Bye bye. This time. That is practice. <laughs> <laughs> 
done. 